how to maximize your case claims when insurance companies are using computer software while reviewing your claim. With us today is California trial lawyer Mark C. Blaine, a solo practicing attorney who specializes in personal injury law in downtown San Diego, California. Mark is also the co-author of the best-selling book, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. Now, throughout this series, we've been talking about software programs that insurance companies use to determine claim and settlement amounts in an injury case. And in part four, we're going to be talking about what your attorney needs to know to maximize the knowledge in getting you the biggest return on your case. So, Mark, I wanted to start this final part off by talking about how someone that's injured can choose a lawyer when they're in an accident case. What should they know or what should they be asking law firms when selecting one for that case? Yes, first and foremost, contact and meet a lawyer that specializes in auto accident cases if it's an auto accident. Um, if it's a slip and fall accident, someone who practices 90% of their practice in that area. There are many attorneys out there that will tell you that they can handle your auto accident case, for example, but do not have the legal expertise necessary to get the best result for your case, especially if they don't uh, specialize in the area. A lot of times uh, I tell clients, look, if you have a heart problem, you're not going to go to a generalist. You're going to go to a heart specialist. Same thing for me. I do injury law. That's what I specialize in. You're not going to find me doing three or four different areas of the law. It's all injuries. But uh, when you have an attorney that specializes in the field, you likely have one who is uh, or has invaluable legal experience and knowledge of different causes of actions that are necessary in achieving a successful case. Also, a good attorney who specializes in these types of cases will uh, know best how to maximize your recovery know all interested parties to go after to, to ensure that there's plenty of insurance funds to make you whole again, and he or she will also know uh, how to make sure your injury case is properly documented for settlement value. A good lawyer can also help you find good medical care if you have no private health insurance. So those are the types of uh, uh, things I would recommend and you look for and you interview for when you're looking for, for a lawyer in your injury case. Yeah, and, and again, for everyone listening, I've been harping on it in all the sections, but make sure you're writing these things down in your action guide because when you are looking for an injury firm to handle your case, you can just go right down the line and be asking lawyers these questions and seeing how they're going to help you and how they're going to best prepare to be the right legal representation for you. And so, Mark, after we've gone through the steps that you just outlined and we have a solid lawyer on board and on our team, um, how do they and, and what should they know about this computer software and how it affects their case? Well, that's really the question of the day. Uh, you need a lawyer that is good on the front end of your case to increase the chances of a successful outcome without litigation. And that's why we're talking about these computer programs. Um, at the same time, you need a lawyer who's also good on the back end of your case in the event litigation becomes necessary. What I would encourage everyone listening to this program to do is to ask questions of the lawyer you are interviewing for your injury case as to what they know about the computer programs and what they do to combat them. Take the information from this program and formulate your own questions, listen to their answers, and then you can go home and make an informed decision on who is the best lawyer for your particular injury case. Yeah, again, I think that that's another great solid checklist for everybody listening to put into place. And so now that we found a, a law, a legal team for us, and we found someone who understands the software, how does your, your legal team or your lawyer combat the software, and, and how do they take advantage of it? Yeah, it comes down to the effective medical documentation and making sure the claims adjuster is properly in putting the medical documentation to drive the program uh, to get a fair settlement range for the injury. This means having good doctors on your case that understand what details are important and having a good lawyer who knows what the doctors need to, to be on the watch for and making sure the claims adjuster is fairly inputting the data. If not, then there is a proper time and place for filing a lawsuit if one ever becomes necessary. But with every, like everything else, knowledge is potential power, and it's up to both the legal and medical profession to better communicate with one another in order to, comp to combat these covert computer programs. The insurance company would rather have the doctors not communicate with the lawyers, so important medical information is left out of the settlement demand package. Uh, and also remember, what is not in the attorney demand package cannot be reviewed by the computer programs. Thus, communication is key. And again, if, if the information is not in the attorney demand package when it's time for settlement talk, um, 
the odds of the adjuster in putting the value drivers into the program are slim to none. So again, communication is, is powerful. Uh, we need to have better communication between the medical profession and the legal profession on this subject. So staying on the subject of communication, when a, a client signs on to whether you use your law firm or any law firm, um, we've talked a little bit about this, but what can that client do to provide you to, to make your lives easier when dealing with the software? And then maybe what are some proven and effective ways for your client to document events during and after the accident? Sure. Uh, the clients uh, can help their case by not missing any medical care, number one attending all medical appointments consistently, and if they do miss, they immediately make up the missed date. Uh, they can also help by communicating to the doctors all of their symptoms and complaints and disclosing any and all prior injuries or medical conditions that may have been aggravated or even exacerbated by the accident. They can fill out forms that help document how the injuries affect their daily activities, known as duties under duress and loss enjoyment of life. Uh, they can also return the lawyer's phone calls promptly when it comes to any aspect of their injury case. What I do for my clients is I email them within two or three days of retaining them a, uh, uh, a couple forms which helps document how the injury accident is affecting them on a daily basis. And I ask them to complete this within 45 days or two months uh, and then turn and hand it in like homework to their doctors. So the doctors can then incorporate those interferences into the eventual medical or final medical report when that time comes. And, of course, uh, I have them sign and date it. That way, if there ever is litigation and they're called for deposition, they can answer intelligently as to uh, how they filled out the forms and how they were documenting their uh, interferences on a, on a daily basis. So a client can be very proactive in helping their attorney. I always call it the double-team approach, and I'm always you know, communicating with my clients throughout the medical uh, therapy therapy period because that's the that's the time where the documentation has to be detailed. Though that time is my is my boxing gloves for the claim. So clients can really help out their lawyers by by communicating with them on those on those issues. Yeah, and th those are some really great points and, and documentation is really going to be key. And I think documentation is also going to be key to the speed of the settlement time. And again, Mark, I think the answer to this, uh, I know in advance is going to be it varies per client, but let's talk about some best case scenario and worst case scenarios and how long do some of these settlement uh, processes take uh, from your end and from the insurance company's end? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, it depends on the uh, case and the injuries and the treatments and uh, how the patient resolves uh, when they are released from medical care. But generally speaking, on a soft tissue case where there's no surgery involved or, or severe injuries like loss motion segment integrity, integrity to the spine, uh, it can take anywhere after the patient is released, anywhere from two to three months for the settlement to be reviewed and a settlement offer made. So it's pretty quick once we have everything in, in hand and we send out the settlement demand package. Now, of course, I don't move forward until my client is released from all medical care, and so uh, and, and that's important because that dictates, uh, you know, the time frames. Also, if there's any residual uh, symptoms, then we have to look to see if there's an uh, impairment to a particular body part, and that's a whole other ordeal where we have to uh, make sure that that's being properly documented under the AMA guidelines because that is exactly what the computer programs are looking for in order to substantiate a, a, an argument for future medical care. Uh, or even uh, justifying that there is an impairment to a particular body part. So time frames, three to, three to four months is typical after done with all medical care, sometimes one to two months. Uh, and, again, we don't move forward until all medical, ca uh, medical care is completed by the client. Great. I really appreciate that answer because I think a lot of people listening, you know, they want to know the time frame of when they can expect to, you know, move on with their lives and, and get on and, and get to the next phase in their life. And, you know, when, when people are coming to you and coming to law firms in these situations, you know, they're, they're usually coming to get the settlements to help pay off their medical expenses, to compensate them from time off work and, and things like that, and, and they're in tough situations. So do you have any other tips or suggestions for these accident victims who are looking for answers to ensure that they get the settlement that they deserve. Yes, they can make sure that they are not only communicating to their employer the reason why they need to take time off from work due to, due to the accident, but they can also communicate this to the treating physicians too. You see, in order to substantiate a claim for lost wages, there must be a foundation not only from the employer, but in the medical findings, findings as well. Doctors can be better at this by asking their patients if they had to take time off from work and then question them as to their job duties, if it involves sitting, 
bending or stooping. Uh, and then the doctor can make a written uh, medical opinion as to the time off being both reasonable and necessary. Insurance companies love taking advantage of, the def of uh, defending these claims of, of lost wages when either one or both of the foundations are, are missing for the, for the wage loss. So if a person is self-employed, uh, these lost wage claims are even scrutinized more. Uh, and usually I ask the injured person to type up how and why they lost time from their self-employment along with proof of earnings. As far as medical care is concerned, a good lawyer can help a person obtain medical care uh, that can be paid back at time of settlement. But uh, definitely the uh, wage loss claims need to both be documented by the employer and the doctors today. It's a one-two punch. Yeah, and, and again, that, that's some really great information. And up to this point, if you've made it through this entire course, you should have a completed action book of things that you need to either ask your attorney or ask, you know, if you're looking to hire a legal firm, what you need to be doing in these situations. You should also know all the things that you should be documenting throughout the entire process from the time of the accident going through the entire case. And, Mark, you've done an amazing job of laying out a topic that I'm sure many accident victims have really little to no knowledge of, and, and we really appreciate that. And I'd love to spend the next few minutes discussing how you are now able to become a resource for people in this situation. So could you spend just a few minutes talking about your firm and how to get in touch with you and also utilize some of the free resources that you're putting out there? Great. Yes, I'm located in downtown San Diego, California, and I can be reached directly at 619 area code 813-7955 or by email at mark at belainlaw.com. My website, belainlaw.com, that's B as in Bravo, L-A-N-E-L-A-W.com, is updated on an almost daily basis with articles, free books, reports, uh, blogs, and frequently asked questions. Currently, I just checked today, I have over 400 frequently asked questions and just about 83 legal videos on my website, and I've written and published approximately 10 books. Of course, one of them, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, uh, recently became a bestseller on Amazon.com, which is what we're doing this program uh, today on. But most of the books are free, uh, including the Wolf, uh, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, and you can go to the website and download a free ebook copy on any particular injury or subject you're interested in, uh, in learning more about or the legal process. I offer these free resources to anyone who's a California resident or injured in a California accident. This way you have important information at your fingertips so you and your family can make an informed decision on using a lawyer for your specific injury case before you call one. That's really solid information, and Mark, I want to thank you for taking the time out today to talk about this subject and start to inform accident victims on what they can expect during the claims process. And I encourage everyone listening today to head on over to BlaineLaw.com. That's B-L-A-N-E-L-A-W.com. And as Mark said, you can download a lot of his, his books and eBooks right there on the site for free. You can also get in touch with them and read the frequently asked questions and resources to help you in that situation. And obviously you can get in touch with Mark and his firm directly to have them represent you in your case. So again, Mark, I really want to thank you for your time today, and I think we really helped a lot of people get the pro take the proper steps when they, got, when they become involved in an accident. Yes, thank you for having me, Greg. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll talk to you real soon.